Alright, let's go. <clears throat> hey everyone, welcome to an exclusive interview featuring Michael K here uh, for a special guest. The famous Michael K for the Otaki electorate. Uh, he is running for a Tika project and um, how are you going Michael? Oh no, good mate. Good? Yep. Yeah, that's good. Uh, today, not so much. I mean, today I went down to the market. Um, awesome catch up with people down at the market. It's one of the great things about um, actually this campaign has been able to get out and like, see people and go mm. out and see the produce in the markets and stuff like that. You know, there's some highs and there's some lows, but mm. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just, um, you know, farming's a bit of an isolated sort of a thing, so getting out and meeting and greeting people is really good. So it was real cool today. Met some really cool people mm. Um, mm. trying to do different things with natural farming. So that was, yeah, oh, that was a real awesome. highlight today. That's awesome. So it's yeah. like a bit of networking for a teacher too, eh? Yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. So um, I've, I've got a few questions here for you today. Um, and, and my first one, of course, is who are you? So, um, Michael K, so that's, um, that's, that's pretty easy, there seems to be a lot of Michaels in the world at the moment, not many people have got the last name K, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I am a second generation re regenerative farmer, um, so, um, and I'm here in Manukau, uh, we're at home at the moment uh, on the farm. Uh, Manukau is just halfway uh, between uh, Levin and Otaki. Mm. Manukau is a little microclimate. Uh, it's quite amazing, really. It's, so we seem to get um, quite a lot of good weather deflection off uh, Pukeau Hill mm. and um, also off Kapiti Island. But we are situated in uh, what they like to call a microclimate. So we've got quite a good moist climate here and we've got really, really great soils. Oh wow, that's, yeah, that, that's brilliant, eh? especially for this kind of region. It's yeah, just... absolutely. Um, so why vote for you? Well, um, I pose Parliament a, um, a real big difference. Um, I am somebody that, um, you know, I've spent, I've, I've probably been banging my head against the wall in, in, <laughs> in a lot of yeah, ways. Yeah. I've been trying to sort of, incorporate the ideas of natural farming mm. um, and mainly around the outcomes that people don't really like, the waterways um, and especially you know the degradation of Lake Horofanua mm. um, and you know to a large extent our coastline you know like our coastline you know one of the things about being an island country is that um, you know these countries have been able to persist with their, their, their seafood Mm. And you know, we actually have we we hear a lot about waterways, um, and we hear something sometimes some things about lakes. But you know, our oceans are are, are also suffering from what's happening on the land. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's that's pretty true. I mean, um, the land has a huge impact on just you know the oceans, the environment, everything really. Yeah. You know? So there's a, so there's that there's this sort of environmental mm. part, but from the social part of it. The process that I actually have been through has educated me very well on... I, I've taken quite a social justice type sort of um, mm. approach before and I've gone head to head with, with different things and it doesn't work. Mm. Um, I've tried to go through as, a, as just, just, a, just a citizen and also with um, environmental groups to try and push things along. Yeah. Um, I found that actually working together with people, um, getting the people that are involved or the stakeholders and actually mm. going outside of like an RMA hearing or something like that, like it's good that that, that process is sitting there, you know, to, to actually cause people to try and do something in mediation or stuff like that. Um, I found that very, um, that was actually... It's like an interesting kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting way of, 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 of actually solving a problem. But yeah. when, when you really drill down on that, it's like, well, that's how we should actually solve all problems, and that's, you right. know, that's why we sort of developed the local labs policy right. in yeah. the Tika project and plagiarism, because obviously that is um, something that the agroecology report over in um, the EU was based upon was was local labs. Mm, mm. So um, you know. You can look at what other countries are doing, and you can say, "Well, you know," and, and this is this is like that's right now that that's that's happening, and they're starting to reap the benefits of that. But you can sort of just because somebody else is doing it doesn't necessarily mean it works. But um, what we what we've got to have a lot of confidence in the fact that if we actually start building policies um, 
locally with the people that are actually affected by policy yeah. that we're actually going to get a better outcome. I, I, I personally think that would be a great idea um, mm. and, and it's great that Atika and you guys are, are, are partaking in that to kind of um, get that started um, yeah. with the, the locals instead of you know people that don't even have a clue about what happens in the countryside. Yeah, and I think the thing is too is that, um, you know, like it's obviously to a lot of people who are watching this haven't gone to candidates' meetings and things, you know, mm. you're not going to know what's really been happening, you know, like yeah. as, as as all the individual candidates have brought their ideas forward and or their party ideas, you yeah. know, like you've got your personal ideas, you've got your party ideas, you know, and um, so as these things have actually come forward, um, you know, I think that, you know, our... our if you like vision or our, our substrate of how we we present mm. um, you know that, that's been well received by everybody that we've been actually if you like competing against and you know that's it's sort of we do need a real seismic shift in the way that we're doing things because at the moment you know like the past um, the past term of government mm. like you know be bipartisan and the previous government has also always been about trying to create policy sort of from this very top-down pyramid type structure. I'd say it's more, not, more or less like a, 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 a policy that's really not structured the right way. Is that, is that what you're... Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's not built the proper way. It might take the problem and then try and... Um, uh, for the couple of examples, mm. I guess... Mm. Um, you know, the, 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 the carbon zero policy um, was all around sort of focusing um, on some, what is sort of thought as to be some whole truths. Right. Um, and so we're concerned about the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Oh, def definitely. Well, and, that's, a, that's a big concern then. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, well, it's a big discussion and a big talk that's happening right now, um, you know, in this current you know, time. <laughs> yeah, and, and and the thing is is that as you focus on that, um, you you might like obviously you don't want to put it there. So the traditional thing is is a lot of the carbon dioxide came from um, or a lot of the pollution that's in the in the atmosphere came from things like fossil fuels and things mm. like that. Mm. And so you've you've got this very vivid image of fossil fuel burning cars and things like that, and that's the constant thing that we see every day. Yeah. Um, we also have agricultural emissions, which we put down to agricultural emissions are absolutely all around what the the cows burping and things like that. These right. very strong narratives then start to sway. The, the construct of what the policy is going to be. Mm. So we have a reductionist policy, which is all about, well, we just need to reduce the amount of cars, we need to reduce the amount of cows, and so, um, and then, therefore, the equation is, you know, negative one, negative one, we'll get back to zero. Yeah. <clears throat> um, unfortunately, that's not the case. Mm. The case is that the 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 actual emissions that, um, what the waterways, waterways bill that's just been done, should have been done as it always has been, water and soil. That's a, that's that's the whole ecology. Good combination. Yeah, well, it's the whole <laughs> yeah, ecology. Yeah, so that's right. you yeah. can't if you separate it up. you separate them off. Even your policies that you write will be mm. apologetic all the way through because yeah. the other one's been missed out. Mm. Um, we have just what we we have that Australia doesn't have is um, we might not have the burning um, the burning droughts and all the rest oh, of it. Oh yeah, no, we don't have that uh, at all. We we got the rain. And the rain, yep, the wet weather as usual, the sunny old tacky weather. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, that, and, and that's, that's, that's our benefit because we need the moisture, like we need the sunlight, we need sunlight, we need moisture, we need and good healthy soil. And, yeah. So, um, you know, that's, that's, our, that, that's our Achilles heel. And we erode 192 million tonnes of soil in 2012. Mm. Um, We've got a lot better at eroding it since 2012. I think that that figure could be double that now. And um, and and our solution that we have got in place with the pine trees, you know, 22 years from now, when those pine those billion trees are, are harvested, we're going to see that 192 million tons of soil that goes goes into the waterways. We're going to see that oh, grow yeah. to an epic mm. proportion. And yeah. you know, that's that's all all we, all. 
harvesting of food from waterways um, or harvesting of food from the ocean becomes threatened. You know, like we we are an interesting electorate because there's been such significant studies, mainly around agricultural and um, urban pollution, and they shouldn't be separated just so that somebody one gets to beat the other one, but. Um, you know, with mollusks and things like that, and you know, especially around Cavity Island, there's these, there's there's some mollusks that they've they've brought up that are four or five times the size that they should be because of basically there's so much nutrient in the water, and um, you know that sounds like it should be a good thing, but it's not. It means that it changes the food web within that within that ocean, mm. and ultimately, you know, like we've got to remember that most of the oxygen that we breathe in. Um, comes from the ocean. So if we wreck that system, um, we, we actually threaten our own survival. Yeah, that's right. I mean, yeah. I'll, I'll, I could go on about this for a long time, but what <laughs> I am going to highly recommend that um, people that are becoming interested in stuff like this, if you're interested in the fact that, you know, we actually have 80,000 edibles, mm. we cultivate 134 of them globally, and that you could potentially, if you ate one new thing every day, you'd have to be 280 years old before you finished eating the last thing. If you're interested in these sorts of things, if you're interested in what, you know, what could be a, a better way, well, um, one of the really good um, documentary films on at the moment, um, which I think should inspire people, is um, the Kiss the Ground movie. Yeah. And I think... I've heard some good stuff about that one. Yeah, and I think if... I think if people watch that, um, you'll sort of know, uh, as, as a regenerative farmer, um, you know, that's, that's really, that's, that's why we have a, we have, we've got a different vibe about us. We're not, we're not like or, organics, I'm not knocking organics, but we're just a different, we've, we've got a, we're, we're a bit more of a free radical. So what is your connection to Otaki? Oh, very much, um, like I've grown up here all my life and, um, you know, we've got to remember that the Oteki electorate is, you know... It, 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 Stunning it, place, eh? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it is the food bowl now in New Zealand. Definitely, yeah. Um, no, and, good. you know, it's um, in old, uh, in old um, uh, um, economy terms, this is actually what we call one of the highest growth areas in New Zealand. So, um, you know, like we're, we're going to go through a massive expansion and, mm. and, and to a lot of people with a lot of anxiety because there's, you know, a lot of things with the initial, the initial growth that we've actually had that haven't been sorted out. So, um, so you know, my connection to here is I've, I basically, I was born in Kaaponga, which is a small, small town in Taranaki. I and I moved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is it like there? Uh, well, we're right next to the Carpuni. We were right next to the Carpuni gas field and um, Smith Brothers Boiling Down Works. Yeah. So we actually had a constant smell of oh. sort of um, right. smoke like sulphur, no matter oh, which okay. way it blew from. So, so it's just it just surrounded you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And when we moved, we moved down here when I was four years old, and so you know, like I've been here for forty years. Um, but um, you know, most of my, all my all my memorable, or well, what I can remember of my life, has mm. has been in this district. So I went to school at Otaki College, and then I sought um, I, I I went to um, Fielding Ag because I sought a more specialized that was a specialized college in yeah. agriculture, mm. and so yeah, I went I went there. Um, but I've practically, even though I've worked in Wellington for sixteen years, I I I've lived here and worked there, so I've you know had to do mm. the commute. Mm. Um, and, and just on your Wellington topic, um, we have a little bit of research about that. So you did some work at um, Wellington's train station. Would you like to explain to the people what that kind of work was? Yeah, yeah. So the Wellington railway station was um, so that's the main concourse floor, which mm. um, basically the whole of uh, the whole of the workforce of Wellington that comes on the train passes through. Mm. Um, yeah, it was a, um, a first time project for New Zealand. We had to um, put a polyurea floor down. And we had to level it, and so it was a significant job. Um, and you know, it was very much about working, uh, working with you know uh, big big contractors. It mm. was it was a huge huge job. Huge, huge job, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And 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 how long did that take to um, to get it all done, really? 
Um, working around the public, um, because it had to be all stitched together and seemed yeah. like it was seamless. Um, mm. So uh, I think it was probably six months by the time we actually really got it all done. That's some dedication right there, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I had to still carry on with my existing contracts as yeah. well. So it yeah. was um, it was a significant it was a significant effort. But mm. Mm. yeah, oh, that's brilliant. What do you bring to um, the government background? Oh, well, so I, I think I'm bringing a fresh approach, really. Um, I think that our culture, um, rurally, mm. um, is in danger. And, like, see, I'm not saying that, I'm definitely not saying that um, urban folk uh, are that, that different. In fact, uh, working in the city, it yeah. was, it was you know, I met some wonderful people. Oh, yeah, sure, um, um, for sure, because you had so many people coming through and... And yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But all my jobs, I worked all over, yeah. all, to, all over Wellington, mm. and um, but but traditionally in this country, the rural rural environment is, or the rural communities, we've always worked together. Um, That's right. It's only been in the last sort of I don't know, probably about fifteen years that we've be, we've become sort of quite separated. But mm. um, but I I I think that the main thing that I bring is that is is stitching together. Um, sort of like this this left and right battle that seems to have been going on for quite some time yeah. it's actually mm. going across parties and it's, it's getting worse over the years of course yeah yeah, yeah. and it doesn't help it doesn't help with just the, the, the vile populism that's over in America at the moment no, not um, at all. <laughs> you know and, and you know we've got so much to do and mm. um, so much more to get right you know we're, we're almost one of the worst worst countries in the world for um, you know for child abuse Mm. Um, our food's really expensive. Um, yeah. The variety of foods not good. Our housing. It's S H I T. <laughs> yeah. Our, our housing. Our housing is a problem. But I mean, yeah. our housing is mainly a problem because you know eighty four percent of the population is is trying now to live uh, in an urban environment. So That's we've right. actually got a lot of empty houses yeah. in the in just the rural setting. Just yeah. sitting there in the, the you know like, like you said in the rural area. It's just yeah. Why uh, can't they get you know moved in yeah well it's it's because um you know and the, the jobs at, the, at this stage you know the jobs are not as full and rich and rewarding as what they could be um mm. because mm. the the incomes the incomes aren't uh, uh you know it's just not sustainable no i'm not, I'm not saying farmers okay. aren't making money but right. i mean you know the the actual overall farmer debt is 63 billion so you know that does that does affect things. Mm. You know when you're making money, you don't have sixty three billion dollars worth of debt. So, mm. Mm. Um, the so yeah, the, the the big thing I think is is actually um, reversing that and making it like a like people are really enjoying coming out to the rural setting yeah. to shop to shop at of course, park, of markets. Course. And that and, kind of brings in the localism too, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and I think it's better to w w live in a village situation yeah. than it is to live in in, in a um, you know a, 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 a massive stacked apartment. Yeah. You know, yeah, so that's right. Um, well, the, the rural areas are the best in this country. Um, yeah, yeah, but terms, the jobs aren't the jobs aren't there, and the yeah. jobs aren't there until mm. you get more people that um, you know that are rural to to yeah. to be in 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 government or be a part of government. Mm. Mm. And and actually, you know, be able to, like we are very very practical people, yeah. um, and not that urban people aren't, but we are much uh, we're a bit of a missing part in the whole system of governments mm. and how we can actually um, work through things. And I just you know I I just really. I want to see a, a massive change that means that you know we we deal with these inequalities mm. in our and society. That, and that probably means a lot to you because you're you're in the industry too, right? The, oh yeah, a lot of people would say, oh, you've got a conflict of interest. It's like, yeah. well, you know, the thing is, is um, uh, and I wore that for a long time. I wore the fact that okay, because I'm a farmer, you know, you shouldn't mm. actually be able to say mm. anything mm. about what you know the direction or the steerage of farming, you know, and and until you meet teachers and they sort of yeah. feel the same way because mm. they've been excluded and oh no you couldn't be included because you know you've got a conflict of interest it's like gee that is nonsense um so <laughs> yeah. 
um, the the thing is, is teachers and doctors and nurses and and yeah. um, you know builders and and everybody that's just, actually doing stuff yeah, needs to be a part of and, yeah yeah yeah. Mm. yeah and I mean from the you know like the the policy is sure that should be it's not the first thing it should be the thing that's reacting to what needs mm. to happen you know like the policy the idea that somebody that's disconnected could get could create something that would create a direction for New Zealand is, mm. is you know it's it's managerialism it's central planning it's it's a it's a neoliberal um, myth and you know the whole of um, you know the EU is um, has suffered from it we we're, we're desperately suffering from it Australia's suffering from it um, we don't need to suffer it we mm. need to just um, you know, create that. Well, that do something different. Yeah. If it's not working, do something different. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. What difference can one person make in Parliament? I think one person can make a, a, a big difference. Obviously, like, um, one person can actually make the big difference where you actually, um, you can, you, you can make the whole thing a shambles. Yeah. Um, we've seen that over the years. But no, no, I think that, um, I, I think that it takes somebody to, to, to actually, um, to have the fortitude to actually stand up and go across mm. party lines, mm. um, you know, it's you read different parties' constitutions and you read the Labour Party's constitution that um, you know people over things, um, mm. and you know, I think that we exemplify that in a Tika, um, and and I think that it couldn't be anything more important going into the next. You know, the next three years is that um, you know people have have got to to matter. You know, um, and mm. so I think one person can definitely make a difference if you can. Um, just one word, how. Um, the That's thing right. is, is we can all want something. We can want change. We can, you know, we want to be green. But you know, what we do need is pe we need people that know the how. You know, we can just skip all of the the actual real conflicts of interest because um, if the people in governments do and know how um, when bullshit comes along you can just go bullshit so um, the, that's that's the biggest thing with farming is that I don't want us to see us go down the rabbit hole that America's gone down you know these these policies are pure Americanized um, smart agriculture mm, mm. and we just got to um, we've got to reject that because um, we've got a very very um, unique position in New Zealand where we were GMO free um, and that was done by the best science that, at that time mm. and, and now it's proven that not only is it that was it the best science at, at its time, it's even more correct now. Mm. So, um, and we've got a much more um, well, we've got trade doors as as wide as um, you could you could put um, U.S. destroyers through. You know, like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. for natural food and fibres, and we're going basically with this this idea that legacy things are a bad thing, like flax, um, wool, um, all all of and those 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 core things that New Zealand was mm. was built on. But that's for, what we've got to go back for, to. For for when you're saying like, is it it's a bad thing like wool and flax and that. Um, do you think that's just like kind of like a um, conflict of interest by sa by the government saying that it is a bad thing? Oh no no, no it's not necessarily saying it's it's it, what's happened is is that um, so yeah people get quite excited about it and I mean mm. uh, individually if there, there wouldn't be a um, there wouldn't be a politician alive that 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 wouldn't wouldn't want to see those things mm. coming back they mm. just got no idea of how to revive it. And and you you couldn't actually get more vindication of that theory when you look at um, how they are trying to uh, revive it. They want to merge all the wool companies together and create a um, party of people that can go over and play golf overseas. That is not how it happens. That's how our meat market is. Um, our meat and our dairy is now just trading in a online auction. Mm. Um, this country was built on making best relationships and it was by 
many, many people being able to market their, their, their products. And um, how do you revive? Well, it's really simple. You just get you just get fashion designers together. You get innovators together that want to make wool products. You get you get the wool growers together, the wool breeders. You get the you know the public together. Mm. You get mm. ideas. You start you you form a local lab, and, and you look at what's happening around the world. And I mean, you know, at the moment, I mean, you know, like you know, forget this poison program that we've got going on into the into the um, into the conservation estate. Mm. You know. There's there's a huge opportunity. You, you're adding value. You're adding value to something that's been a um, you know as a, a pest. Mm. You know you bring the possum. You bring the possum fur into the into the wall, and then you're you're creating a, another product. You know. Yeah, and in terms of jobs, that's what Atik is looking at um, to bring more jobs back that are New Zealand made jobs. And New Zealand hosted jobs um, for New Zealanders, right? Not overseas people. Well, is that something Atik is looking at? So well, you want to, re- you want to, re- you want to, um, you want to avoid stupid things like um, a foreign-owned company goes out into our fisheries and captures hoki, mm. and then sends it to China where it's processed yeah. to come back to a foreign-owned um, supermarket to sell for. You know, five ninety nine a kilo or something. Mm, mm, what? Mm. What? You? You? We don't want whole logs going off. We, you know, we've always said that we don't. We don't. You know, to a large extent, um, you know, we shouldn't be sending as. We sh- if we're going to send whole milk powder, we should be adding value to some things. I mean, look, there's some wonderful. There's some wonderful stories about um, milk. Mm. If you 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 take you take the milk into a proper system. You can, there is no, there is nothing but products that come out of it. There's no waste. Mm. Um, at the moment, we've got to do something with a lot of the whey products because we don't have any manufacturing for them. Whereas mm. a lot of plants now are set up that that whey is made into vodka, and there's just nothing that's not used. Mm. Our meat companies have been like that for years. That you know every single, um, every single part of the animal which is quite spiritual really because mm. that's the tradition mm. is that you know you use every part of the animal because the animal's given its life well, we've got to the stage now where we're dumping pelts and oh. we're, we're, we're um, you know because we're relying on the supposed free market it's not a free market it's an oppressive market on the local market and so you know but I mean, again, it's it, it comes down to um, actually letting us mm. as people, or um, you know, be able to construct something that that is much better. And yeah. that's there's so many um, people that are out there that have ideas that you that instead of them being able to, without prejudice, share those ideas in what we call our local labs, yeah. and 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 then. Uh, inform the policy. Mm. Um, these people are, uh, are having to make the way to Wellington and, and try and desperately plead with select committees to to, to not do this and not do that. And it's sort of like that's um, that's you, you're not you're actually it's not not a proper way of doing things no. because at the end of the day you're actually got horrible policy mm. that you're trying to. Basically, enforce. Well, you're no, you're trying, you're trying to sort of relieve it, relieve it, yeah, from from being inflicted on the population. Mm. Mm. You've got all these better ideas that are here, but you know, you instead of being able to discuss that with anybody, um, you know, it, you you've got people on the other side, and that, and you know, the, the not all, of course, but you've you've got a whole heap of elected MPs that are sitting there, and you know, they're sort of. Um, you know they're thinking. Well, you're trying to shoot this down because you don't, you don't want to be um, restrained because you want to <laughs> yeah. carry on poisoning the environment. And That's I, right. I don't think that, I don't think that anybody's like that. I mean, if you want to find people for poisoning the environment, find the people that make the chemicals, find the people that make the make the big cultivation equipment, find the people that that um, make urea. I mean, the government is a shareholder in that. Um, so. You know that's that's the thing. It's like you know we're very quick to um, you know we've we've celebrated the fact that we've beaten the hell out of the dairy industry for years, and we call that a success. Mm. Um, and we've fined people, but you know, f- 
all the way through 40 years of, of that sort of structure of trying to fix the environment, um, not a day has gone by when all of the municipalities have been just dumping human waste to waterways. Mm, and good. that's that's ridiculous. And, that, you know, and so, you know, I've submitted to many select committees, yeah. to many regional councils about ideas about um, how to... Um, not just treat sewage um, mm, mm. on the land, but actually turn it into a product. And did it get anywhere? No, because no. Uh, you 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 get somebody a bit interested, mm. but at the end of the day, um, I'm not writing the policy. The people that you're speaking to, they're not yeah. writing the policy. Mm. Um, the people, what really is only being answered, or, or the question that is being asked, is well, um, can we carry on dumping to the waterways? Mm. Um, and and um, and if we look at and you've got this other option which would be like shooting it into the atmosphere and that's genuine that actually <laughs> was an option um, or pumping it down um, pumping it down old wells um, and so you you basically you know these councillors are sitting there and they think well that's that's a shit idea that's a shit idea that's a shit idea well I suppose you know like well you know this one uh, monopoly of a of a research institute called Landcare says that it's not that bad. Yeah. Um, so you know, which has been paid by the company that yeah. actually yeah. Um, is dumping the stuff into the waterways. Just to say a lie, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. But <laughs> and um, you know, well, even though the even though the the document like the front page of the report says it's you know it's it's not that bad, but the report itself that's been written by real people. Um, you know, by lab people that actually did the testing, mm. so that's bloody terrible. Mm. Um, you know, that's 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 all they could. Where's the good question? You that's know, right. like so it's. Yeah. I guess that's the thing is making sure that um, we. The only one way you can make sure that the um, government is actually making decisions on 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 better questions, mm. is um, you know is. Is, is basically making sure that the people actually write the policy. Um, that's right. Yeah. It, that's all I, I yeah, can see with yeah, that. Yeah. All right, so, um, so since you're a part of a Tika um, and you're a part of a, a really great group of friends um, that have come together to create this, um, what makes a Tika unique? Oh, well, a very quick and simple one to a Tika being unique is mm. as a project, um, Slash party doesn't matter. But as a tika, <laughs> more of a project day. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's a better word. Yeah, um, you you learn from um, you look at something like well, all of us look at things and we sort of go well, that's what's not working. And the first thing that we we realised as far as political parties go is as they try to emerge or build, mm. leadership's a problem. Yeah, um, definitely. It means that you've got uh, like well, each person because geez, you've got a hell of a lot that you've got to do, okay? Um, and you have a hell of a lot to do when you even in a big party, you yeah. know. Um, so it's it's populism's a really big a big problem, and um, you know anybody watching this, if if you believe this not to be the best truth. Um, then um, you know that's, the that's fine. That's, the audience decides. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. But um, populism comes primarily yeah. from from the leadership. If we look at what's happening in America, yeah. um, and you know, it seems to be something that sensationalizes this. Um, Just the whole polit political world, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so we don't have we we specifically until the very you know if we were if it down the track this thing got to a point where we were looking like we were going to get something like 20 or 30 percent of the mm. of the votes across the country or something mm, like that yeah. then we'd look at um we'll still look at how the how we we're going to incorporate that leadership thing we've had to build how we would bring candidates in you know mm. like to make sure that that candidate had the best possible go like you know the thing is is you don't want to be trying to stand 70 candidates all the way through the country if they're not legitimate candidates mm. don't mm. i don't i think it's disrespectful to say that um to sort of go along the lines that you know people would have to vote for someone if they weren't genuinely going to actually go and do the job so that they're actually standing there just for the party vote yeah. I think that's a breakdown in democracy. I think that the five percent threshold 
you know, and that's, I, if you can't, can't accuse me of having a conflict of interest on that one. We're not a registered party. But I think that the, the 5% threshold means that we don't, we still only have a two party system. That's right. With sort of tag ons of, of little parties. Like, um, I think that the leadership model of parties means that a lot of these parties um, might only even have eight people in them, but they really only centre on one person's um, ideas. Yeah. And, that, and that's really sad because and we've got should. 120 me members of parliament. Mm. And I think that um, I think that, and we all share this I, that this understanding of what's wrong with um, what's gone wrong with our, the loss of democracy in New Zealand is that we really don't have um, the we, we we as a public don't get to see those 120 members of Parliament, and you know the thing is is. It's not saying that all 118 don't do anything. Mm. They probably do more than the people that you actually see all of the time. But it means that um, it means that it's not really a democracy. It's, yeah. it's so so. That's that's, and that, that's that's kind of what makes Atika unique. Yeah, um, yeah. We're trying it's to more or less um, not the leader that makes the decision. It's it's everyone involving each other. Yeah, um, and I, 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 I think that's a really great great idea that you guys have um, you know as a brand new unregistered political party and I think that will gain a lot of interest to a lot of people um, uh, in terms of wow this party doesn't have a leader yeah <laughs> I think that it's it's a, it also creates a culture uh, it creates a culture outside of the party mm. it creates um, it, it it stimulates tribalism. Yeah. Um, you know, there is conversations about you know trying to stop, um, you know, like this obsession with hate speech and things like that. Which you know that's 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 an awful thing to have happen. That we 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 we're, we're questioning the freedom of expression. But mm. but the and that's um, kind of currently happening now too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But but we as politicians mm. we have to take responsibility. Yeah. For that, and and I think that um, we've got to be able to have, um, you know, in the adversarial system, we've got to be able to have pretty strong and robust debate. Mm. Um, but where it's protected speech is where politicians are coming out and having um, slings, you know, slinging mud at people's. Uh, um, families um you know and questioning you know the person themselves in a personal sense um when they're actually not even really having robust debates in the house or anything like that and a lot of times the participation in the house the actual attendance isn't isn't it isn't respectful to the people so um and then you know Going out and saying, well, society, you know, you're the problem. I think that's not cool. I think that the, there is every politician, it sounds a silly thing to say that politicians should be, um, should should lead the way in this country. But that's the claim that's actually been made in the mm -hmm. past, this past term of government. Yeah. Um, and to a large extent, there has been actually, you know, like that's, the working together thing, working across parties and things for different different stuff, but um, you know, there's not a huge, um, there's not a book of stuff here that's been achieved, and it's what we're sort one, of saying is that yeah, it's it's um, leave leave people alone. Mm. And um, and actually bring people into this process, and yeah. I think that I think that's that's going to heal all of the all of the worries about hate it's speech. Pe people need to be more involved with with what government's kind of doing. Yeah, to bring back the public trust in yeah. government. I mean, that's yeah. that's that's the problem. Mm. Um, you know, and a really strong argument to be made at the moment is to actually start setting down some time to make some legislation to um, to to make it very very clear. Mm. People have human rights. Um, corporations, things don't. Yeah. It's as simple as that. And, and people are also important. 
very important. Um, yeah. Because it's, 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 this is everything, you know? <laughs> yeah, and the government itself yeah. does not have, um, it does not actually have um, this, these rights. There's, it has no, it has no rights above people. It is a servant of people. Mm. And that's, that's something that, um, you know, it's been quite um, alarming to see, um, you know, like, we've got a lot of work to do around the flow of the freedom of information. Yeah. It's the digital age, you know, uh, information should be almost between 24 and 48 hours, not, not 21 days. Mm. Um, it's not by coming by carrier pigeon. Um, <laughs> the, but the, the idea that, um, the idea that, that, that government um, deserves to silence people or... That's a bit wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If something goes... If there's... You know, we've... We, we've got a lot of things um, spying on people in Christchurch over the earthquake claims, um, spying on people that have protested against um, um, how the Department of Conservation um, manages the, the conservation estate. Um you know, uh, there's spying on people that were the claimants for the um, the, the the nuclear testing, mm. um, and, and just think the spying costs money. You know? Yeah, and yeah, they, um, employing sure a pri that, private firm to do so. I'm sure so. that costs taxpayers money, right? Mm. Yeah. So and I mean, that's a that's a that's a dark side of things. It's but it's like um, I, I I guess we that trend goes across many many things, and yeah. it's just. Mm. It's just creating that, you know, a lot of people this election have talked about um, the human rights and, um, mm. and, uh, uh, and, and they really are, um, they're, they're, they're antitrust. Yeah, um, it's, it's ramped up, it's really ramped up this, this election compared yeah. to, you know, past ones. Yeah, and I mean, it's a waste of time talking about conspiracy yeah. theory and all <laughs> of that sort of thing. Because, I, I mean, at the end of the day, like... If there isn't the freedom of information, and if there isn't, if people don't really have rights, and, and you're starting to talk about uh, taking away the freedom of expression and things like that, well, um, you know, that's that's actually only aiding to that um, that spurgery of um, you know basically um, people freaking out. You know, mm -hmm. that's creating a fear, and that's because yeah, those things are actually totalitarian, authoritarian, mm -hmm. feudalism. All that sort of thing. So, I mean, if we're going to live with the, the, the big thing is, is centralising, you know, a democratic process. Yeah. Um, and, and um, you know, and, you know, there is, I guess, that's that's the thing that I just, um, I think that, yeah, we've, we've got to get away from the idea that people could possibly be meritless. Yeah. Um, and we've got to... The highest value is our as our as our as our people, and um, you know um, that's probably the saddest thing about having to having to having an environment that does need something to happen with it that's yeah. better that causes yeah. a better result. It's mm. inclined to cause um, society to devalue people mm. because people have done the harm and, to and the it environment. Makes people think like. Well, what am what am I meant to be doing if you know they're protesting against it um, and yeah. it's not being listened to? Um, you know, those people just don't get the attention. Yeah, to help so them it's very get rid of that fear and anxiety. Yeah, so and it it's um, yeah it's very very important that um, you know to get some progress and actually having a better environment and all of that sort of thing mm. and and actual you know pr productive governance and and an open democracy yeah it's mm. very very important to to set those ground rules and um so you know i'd, I'd love i'd love to um sit in on the um you know on hearing the bill for hate speech because i'd like to enshrine it that we could never ever have something like that mm. yeah um so um <laughs> moving on um, we need to go to the next one. Um, so, what what is regenerative agriculture? So, if we can just get a really short answer on this. Yeah, one. yeah, absolutely. Like I've already said, like one of the best things that people can do is because that movie is just awesome. Um, mm. The um, the kiss the ground movie, but basically yeah. it's as simple as this. Uh, regenerative agriculture sort of sits in between what I call my chemical brothers and sisters, who <laughs> are, are the you know that's what. Let's yeah. call that the standard stock farming, mm. right? Mm. Uh, not stock, but you know. 
Growers. You get what, you get what he means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gro- <laughs> growers, farmers, you know, what Americans call ranchers. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, and then we've got regenerative agriculture sitting in the centre of this. Um, and then at the, the, ver- the very top end, we've got um, permaculture. In between that, in the regenerative agriculture things, are variations of all sorts of stuff. So you've got organics, you've got bio, um, you know, biodynamics, mm. you've got um, carbon farming, you've got all of these different things. But it all sits under a science called agroecology. And agroecology is sort of, um, basically, it's a reactionary thing where, where scientists are, are, are actually trying to describe or discuss or interpret what nature does. So, mm. whereas if we go back to what we've got now in, in, in the current chemical system, it's about what we can do to nature. So that's, mm. that's the two different things. Very, very interesting. Yeah. Everything overlaps though, like right. currently in New Zealand, um, you know, we're actually, we're ahead of many countries with rotational grazing. Um, we've always been on a pastoral system. Um, so we we understand the basic companion, rye and clover. Mm. Um, and, you know, up until about 1982, we only spread about 42,000 kilograms of urea on the whole country and 38,000 kilograms of that was on vegetables. So, um, the, and at that point in time, the... Um, the total understanding there was is there really wasn't much point in developing um, a urea plant um, or, or anything like that because there really wasn't any interest for it. Mm, mm. What we've gone to is 990,000 tonnes of urea and, um, you know, and like I said, we're actually... Did you say 990,000? Yeah, 990,000. Holy so, and, yeah, um, is, we don't is... We don't make all of it, um, mm. and some of it comes comes in from overseas, but we also, um, this is ridiculous, we could be making all of it because we actually export mm. more than the difference that yeah. we import. Mm. But um, wow. that's <laughs> bit, bit by the by. But regenerative agriculture is, um, we don't have those inputs, mm. Um, so we're basically working on um, the fact that from we're turning sunlight into soil. Mm. So every plant exudes down with exudates um, carbon through the carb- root carbohydrates. Yep. So 40% of what the, um, is, is grown above grows down. Um, mm. So um, Just like an improvement of, of life. Yeah, yeah. Well, the food that um, this would be, don't worry about potatoes because they are in the ground. But yeah, basically, yeah. the um, the 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 food that you're growing off the plant is the byproduct. The main aim is actually to grow soil. Mm. So, um, which to steal something from Chris the ground, but I mean, you know, we all this is just our this is our understanding is that um, so if you're looking at you're looking at the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Mm. Most of the times you'll see it as a straight line on a graph. Yeah. It's not like that. It's an oscillating line, right? Oh, so okay. um, basically every growing season it comes down, but it's still on a rising plane. Mm. That rising plane is all of the soil tillage um, that we're exuding up into the atmosphere. So basically we can grow that carbon down. Um, so the Paris Accord which we signed, um, the good part of the Paris Accord was the 4P1000 which is to squeeze to 0.004% mm. of um, carbon to soil. And that's like, that basically means like books like Drawdown, Project Drawdown, um, you know, it features things like regenerative agriculture and specifically it's, you know, it's food forests, mm, mm. Um, alley cropping, um, carbon farming, you know, of course there's a lot of things that technology can play a part of, which is reducing the food miles and things like that, but also um, a lot of that is, you know, slash technology, looking to the side, it's actually, again, it's coming back to our local labs, it's just the fact that we actually self-organise and... Um, mm. Mm. We cut down those. Uh, we make sure that we've got all of the linkages that are needed in supply, yeah. and um, you know, and that's communicated out into every, um, you know, e- every small place, so that things are actually processed. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, so, what what is your uh, water policy? Uh, why is your water policy so focused on um, soil? Uh, well, the biggest thing with creating carbon into the soil is means that the water is being filtered filtered through the soil. So, mm. and 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 of course, we've for a country that really about on average is receiving about eleven hundred millimeters to twelve hundred millimeters of rain per mm. annum. Mm. Um, you know, when there's other countries around the world that only might receive 300 mils of rain and they manage to grow food, yeah. we have become incredibly and increasingly dependent on irrigation schemes, which mm. is one of the reasons why we're needing that irrigation is because we're creating all of the spare soil, we're creating radiance up and it doesn't rain. Mm. The other thing that I, why, why that is happening is because we've actually, we've got a little video that you can watch, but it shows um, that um, basically we've compacted the soil which yeah. means that it cannot actually drink water. Yeah, it's so a brilliant, brilliant experiment, you should go check it out. Um, it's called um, uh, Chemical Agriculture versus uh, uh, natural, uh, natural Farming versus Chemical Agriculture. Sorry, I almost got that one wrong. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, it's a brilliant um, experiment and you know, I, I didn't even know that happened. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean that's and that, and that's part of that's a part of like local labs also is being able to hand back that that control and yeah. and, and knowledge into mm. into farmers. I mean, you know, like hey, you know, like it's it's um, when you've got a mindset um, that and, and and almost a madness of the crowd. Mm. So you've got a madness of the crowd that this is the best way. And we're really, really productive. Um, Productivity is one thing, um, but actually making any money is another. Um, it's but if whatever you do, by the time you've taken all your expenses out, you're borrowing money off the bank, which is practically how our government governs. Um, if that's that's the result, no, that's that's a failure, mm. um, and that's pretty much like the. There's core principles stolen from organics that 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 are sequestered right across agroecology, which is there's a very social justice thing about making sure that workers are looked after, mm. which we've addressed in Matika because we've got a, a policy called uh, profit share, which is all about making sure that to well to get a tax reduction, yeah, all businesses would share a um, share some of the profit with their workers as an incentive for them to be um, you know really engaged in whatever they're doing and it really really works in agriculture and, and it, it would bring worker care back too wouldn't it, it would, yeah yeah and, and it would bring that value back to the worker mm. so your profit profit share is um, at the moment we've got um, you know there is there is a tax reduction for different things but mm. But we specifically think that it's the best tax reduction. Uh, the other big policy that we've got is around like investment's a big thing. Okay, investment is, um, you know, are we going to invest in our future? Mm, mm. Is other people going to invest in our future? Where is that? Where is investment going to come from? So currently, at the moment, um, depending on who you want to believe, but um, let's put this figure out there. Currently there's $440 billion in, a key, in KiwiSaver mm. that is overseas. What we thought was one way of actually, well, years ago, and it's true, it was a good thing to do, was to take the subsidies away, or farming. It meant that, um, it meant that we actually had to stand up and, and, um, and, and be a profitable business. Unfortunately, mm. we, for a lot of people, it hasn't become that way. It doesn't mean that we should subsidise it. Mm. It means that we should learn to farm more productively. But what we've done instead is we're actually subsidising our own people's money to go overseas. And, you know, a lot of young people don't like what that money's being spent on. It's being spent on um, weapons programmes and things like that. Or, you know, whatever it's spent on, it doesn't matter. It's not. It's our own money and it's not being spent on our future. And then, so w what we thought was... Um, and, and, and we think this is the best thing going forward is we would actually remove that subsidy and the only way that you get that you know, from you know money that's going overseas the only way that that subsidy would apply is if that money was invested in to New Zealand businesses or mm. you know you know or even 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 our core infrastructure projects that's the way that we think that we should be funding our future 
So that could be 440 billion coming home. Um, so that's that's that's. Um, I mean, and that's just smart capital. That's that's. Um, it's been written about, um, talked about, for a long time. Um, and you know, we actually have to be. We actually have to start getting a bit tough on these things. So um, you know, I, I I think that's I think that's really good. But I think the big policy that we um, we've we've um, really as a fresh out of the gate little little party, the, we just think that um, the biggest thing that caused social inequality in this country was GST. Mm. And we think that um, the biggest stimulus that we could give to the economy is actually removing GST and that will, there is, um, you know, there is so many reasons to get yeah, rid well, of it. What, what are the, so what, what are the actual benefits like that you can guarantee from removing GST? You've explained like work, care, you know, stuff like that. What are the other benefits? Well, the huge benefit is is that um, obviously you put more value in. Uh, so, so anybody can start a business then. Mm, right. So there's what a lot of parties make the mistake of is they say, oh well, if we raise the threshold of GST to say a hundred thousand, mm. that will bring in more small small businesses. We've already done that. It didn't. It actually removed small businesses, and there's a good reason why it did. Is because those small businesses couldn't claim. The, the costs, as they're building that business, they couldn't claim their expenses. Mm. And it, that's pretty obvious. It's pretty obvious that that would, that would mean that the, the big, giant business over here had more of an advantage than this little one. Yeah. So, and, and that kind of plays a role with like a contractor that have an advantage compared to a small business, is that correct? Yeah, as a sole trader, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's, it's, it's almost, um, it's a... Um, see, I didn't know. There's actually only two people in government that um, you know that that their whole job is to look after small small businesses, and mm. small businesses make up um, you know the majority most, of, most of what's, of what's trading. By, and, yeah. yeah. So um, so that's um, and apparently that's something that the Labour Party's you know urgently um, trying to trying to work on, but. Um, we don't necessarily need those people if we get rid of GST and if we create yeah. a, a we, we allow society to self organize um, we we start to not quite need well we 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 remove this sort of being um, you know sort of being the product ourselves we're the product of something and we're just being sort of kicked around here in the middle Lab rats. Um, yeah so I mean the other huge thing about um, the other huge thing about removing um, GST is, mm. is cutting down, cutting down an enormous amount of extraction of your 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 working capital once you are registered. You know, like the thing is, is mm. yeah, you can claim it back, um, but if you're actually penalised for being profitable, because if you're profitable, then you've got to hand off, you've got to hand off, um, you know, fifteen percent of that profit. Yeah. And it's there's fifteen percent of the the capital going forward, and usually by the time you've done that, you're in a, a new period of GST and a new two months period. And that in that new two months period, you might have spent all that money, so you haven't got it anyway. So it's just it's just a loss. <laughs> That's what I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, people that people that have a really, really. Um, um, productive business that probably doesn't speak too much to them. I mean, you know, like because um, you know you can afford if you if you've got a high transfer of um, of of profit. Well, you know you pay your taxes and and that's that. But the reality is is that um, you know as people we can't actually afford those businesses at the moment. You know we can't afford. We're we're all in the same boat. We're all we're all going to be on, um, you know, um, tight margins, and to be going into a recessionary sort of time, and being on worse. tight margins, GST is going to strangle the economy. It's going to strangle the um, ability for people to be. Right, let's face it. The one thing that we really want to create is a society that um, everybody's able to. If we could get back to 100% employment, if we can get back to it, that, that there's no need, some like uh, we don't want to be. This was the biggest lesson that we we could have for parties to go out there and start saying, 
um, oh look, we think it'd be wonderful if we could we could apply mm. UBI to <laughs> the whole thing. It's like, hey, we've just had two rounds of that. Um, you, it, it, it was always it's not theorized. At all. Well, um, it was always theorized that yeah. it was so so yeah. expensive that mm. you could just about cripple an economy with it. And um, you know, I'm not saying that the economy is actually crippled at the moment, but. Um, yeah, it is. It's, it's it, bound to happen for yeah. us, you know, onwards to Christmas and, and onwards to next year. Um, from from what my research is, you know, it's it's not looking good. No, and no. And when we have a look at our news agent, you know, you know, our news agent for our company, it's all full of propaganda saying that the economy is doing well, and it, that is a complete joke. It's a lie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the thing uh, the. Um, you know, trying to predict what's going to happen, you don't know what's going to happen next. Um, mm. But mm. the, um, you know, it's yeah, the idea of of UBI is um, I, I, it's you know, there's the obvious thing it doesn't work. Um, then you're going to tax all the millionaires based on what property they own. Well, you know, if the, if the the figure is a million, well, that's just about all of. Um, because you've had your only growth that's been created in the economy is the is the capital value of housing. Um, that means all of Auckland um, is going to pay a wealth tax. Um, look, that's just um, it was Churchill that said, you know, a country that thinks that it's going to save its woes by um, tax is like a fat man trying to lift himself standing in his own bucket. You know, basically. So um, you know the thing is is. Uh, we we we've got to get we've got to get productive, so we've got to remove the brakes. So, geez, that those policies, you know, like and they're all available on our website. Um, obviously, we we don't um, from here. Those are that, well. There's there's some central policies there that we think that that realistically they they form a, a core of bringing New Zealand back for New Zealanders, um, but the. I can't stress it enough. I think the thing is, is that it's almost like putting government back in its place. Um, that we are actually um, civil servants. Um, that we are actually, um, you know, we we are equal to our people, not superior to our people. Mm. Um, and that we can, you know, basically we can listen. You know, that's that's the main thing. You know, and look. I can see after doing this that I can understand people, politicians being quite resentful to the public. Mm. Um, you know, there's some, uh, you, I wouldn't even call it voter apathy. There's some real, um, a mixture of being hurt, um, there's a mixture of being betrayed, there's mm. a mixture of um, just do not want anything to do with politics mm. and I could see how that could sort of calcify over a person and that you could regard the public rather poorly um, being somebody that's in farming mm. and especially natural farming yeah. I'm quite used to even by my own peers um, being treated like I'm, I'm, um, I'm mad um, and you just laugh it off mm. and uh, at the end of the day I mean the thing is is what 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 a you know, there's 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 these great things that happen where where people you sow a seed in somebody and they and they um, that idea grows and then you see them uh, uh, off doing something else and then they they give you back something that that you wouldn't even have really thought of for mm. um, you know and and that's that's the rewarding thing. Who wants to like we've got to get away from the situation that um, just about where we were at, where everybody was reliant on government. Um, before that, we were at the, you know, like if you surveyed, you know, every person in the country, they would tell you that um, the, the least least thing that they trust is government. And That's so, fact. yeah, so um, what, what we're sort of um, really got to push, you know, going forward is actually you know, really making a difference in outcomes, mm. that as we go forward that, you know, we might have ambitions about something, but let's make sure that we know how. Um, that, you know, making policies are one thing, but, you know, let's make sure that we can actually manifest this in reality. Let's make sure that we're actually putting 
um, you know, instead of just going and dumping down huge amounts of money into things, let's make sure that we've actually not just um, uh, that we we do things on a on a smaller scale to start with and and progress things things forward. Let's make sure that we actually spend the money that's urgent. You know, like the thing is, that we we need a we need electric rail through the Otaki district and get the people off the road. Mm. Um, you Sounds know, like that's, you've got a lot planned for the uh, Otaki Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But these are only the things that yeah. everybody's been saying, and yeah, it's like yeah. I don't want to see. I don't want to see. Um, I don't want to be in my rocking chair and uh, and and turn <laughs> on. See the world go to hell. <laughs> well, I don't want to be there sitting on and turn on this quality, you know, like it's now on Netflix and see, um, you know, five or six candidates standing up there and talking about electrifying the rail or getting <laughs> for or getting like you know like we've got a four lane highway but we couldn't get off it, you know, because mm. there was no there was no um, we didn't have enough money to build build the off ramp so yeah, yeah. Um, you know like it's just you know and I just really hope that you know we can see a um, that you know just the the things change for um, that benefit people that don't seem to benefit that um, seems that all things um, have benefited um, big big foreign <laughs> corporations yeah, yeah. and um, hedge funds. Selling out. That's basically yeah. it. Yeah, so I think the, the biggest thing is actually seeing that um, instead of instead of reading that we're, you know, the worst at this or the worst at that or, or that sort of thing. That it wouldn't matter who you talk to, this was the best country in the world to live in. Yeah. It, it, it wouldn't matter who you asked, um, that they, 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 they don't know anybody that's hungry. Mm. Um, that, you know, we wouldn't be worried about, um, you know, what, like we, we 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 wouldn't be trying to make social rules about whether people can smoke pot or whether they can. Basically, we wouldn't basically. be obsessed with that. We wouldn't yeah. be. We wouldn't be. Um, you know, trying to part. We wouldn't be having a referendum on whether we can knock grandma or grandpa off. We would be. <laughs> we would be actually. You know, we'd be a happy, open, free society. Um, we'd be. Um, we'd we'd sort of. You know. Um, when you turn on the news, there'd be actually really good stories. There'd, um, that's, you know, that's the thing. And, you know, like, um, you know, what would be really good is if um, we had enough, we, we, were, we were such a happy country that um, basically, you know, news companies just really could, didn't bother actually mm. trying, to, trying to present us um, American politics because... Mm. It just, nobody was interested. See, I remember when I was younger, there was just news stories about sheep blocking the road, you know? Mm. Um, <laughs> so that, that's kind of like the news that needs to come back. Um, yeah, and, yeah. And that's kind of what, you know, we don't care about the world. We don't care about them. It's, it's oh, about, you know, we sort of would like to see yeah. more of the world, but less of um, the, some the of this. The bad side of it and, and yeah. whatnot. Like, we've got to talk about our country and how we can actually make the country feel great. You know, mm. all the people feel good about living in this country. Um, like, you know, we see on 100% pure New Zealand, which supposedly is the best country in the world they try to promote, it's all the South Island, you know. Um, mm. and, and it's not just about the South Island. It's, you know, there's a whole lot more issues going on behind the scenes, and we need to get that fixed. And I'm sure that you guys are, uh, are working hard for that. Yeah, no, absolutely. But I think the thing is, is if um, you know the, we can't be waiting for a report to come out that tells us that we've got the same waterways, which is just what came out. We've got, but they're just exactly the same as what they were ten years ago. Mm. Um, what what we want to get to is that we actually physically can see better waterways. That we can physically see, um, we we don't look at the hills and the soil's not running off them because you know they've been raped with pine trees. Um, you know that we actually, um, when it rains, our rivers don't turn brown, and you know the just all of these other problems. Just you know, it's it is a it is a happy place. Yeah, yeah. My final question would be for you because I've still got a few more, but um, this one will be the final one to conclude it all. Um, <laughs> in 2019, um, your partner made a complaint to the press council. Um, so what was that all about? 
Oh yeah, so in 2019 we sort of um, we saw the the start of um, a progressive idea about um, managing managing the people's expression. Um, so being conscious of like actually knowing history um, and knowing just you know the very wicked regimes that have done that. Mm. They didn't. They didn't necessarily do it from a sense that um, we're going to get the people. Mm. Um, they did it from a sense of fear, and mm. um, and and you know, like so. So, nineteen twenty three in, in Germany, they they saw the rapid rise of a lunatic, and they and they they created the law illegal to spread false rumor and hate speech. These two laws were used to round up six million Jews. They were used to round up, well, they were used to round up all the ac academics to start with, because of course, you know, people that know history, people that are smart, they are going to turn around and say, well, actually, that's not a good idea. You're actually making a thing mm. uh, that's got more rights than people, mm. um, and you know, you, once you've lost free expression or once you've lost the freedom of information. Hey, we might not like conspiracy theory, but just learn to laugh. Um, we might not. Um, we might not like. Uh, we might not like. Our, uh, we might get offended about something. Well, mm. uh, being offended is just a choice. You know, it's, it's you can you you're, you've got a real luxury if you can choose to be offended. Um, the thing is, is um, you know, the freedom of speech. Obviously, it should end as it does um, when you're actually. You know, you're promising violence. Um, mm. That's that's different again. Um, but yeah, so w we saw um, some terrible misframings of well, they are very ignorant, and so we tried to we tried to ask uh, from a level of of um, you know fair and reasonable and accuracy about you know what was written there because it was actually put it was if you read the story as written you know there's so much so much that was inaccurate that you would actually say well this is a really good idea we should turn ourselves into 1923 Germany mm. um, or you know the Soviet Union or um, you know other wicked other, other other wicked regimes all of them have these laws and um, you know it's you know, we, we, we weren't able to get it upheld, but the, the point is, is that, um, yeah, we, we, we had our best to put the information before for people then, and, um, you know, look, it doesn't matter what we think we're going to argue about now. If we, lose the, the, um, if we lose the freedom of expression in the very vulnerable situation that we are in now, mm. um, we really, all those things that I've talked about, like, local labs um, you know being able to being able to self-organize into a situation that has a better outcome they all go out the, 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 the door um, you know um, yeah yeah you won't be able to criticize government you won't mm. be able to criticize people in government you won't be able to criticize policy um, you know if a lot of people say oh look it was a bad thing to remove the prayer yeah, of course, it was a bad thing to remove the prayer. Um, that's that's enshrined in our in our um, you know, our bill of rights. Um, you know, I'm 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 agnostic. It's not that I I want to pr protect it for any other reason than it's um, it is it is um, some people for for a lot of people that's that's something that is you know that's that's abhorrent to have done that. So yeah. and it's it's a it's a slippery slope. It's a slippery slope once you start going down there, and to hear somebody that has been regarded very well say that um, that was, you know, it, that that's something that that could happen is quite quite frightening. Um, but you know, hopefully, again, you know, it's it, it's something that's able we're able to. Um, cross parties actually avoid the nonsense of that because that's not something that mm. any government 
um, that could come along should be able to interfere with. That was made by much smarter people than what we have got in government right now. Mm, yeah, well that explains everything. Um, I'm sure we've got a whole lot of information that a lot of people will get to know um, about just you, Michael, and um, a teacher project in general. Um, so that's going to be it for us. Um, that's it for us on this interview. We did have a few more questions, but we'll save them for another interview. Um, we might sneak them in. Um, but thanks so much, Michael, just so much for um, coming on to this episode. And um, yeah, just hopefully it explains a few more things to get get to know you a little bit better, get to know your honesty and um, kind of stuff that you have to keep your word to now because it's all on film. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's going to be it. So how can people find you? Uh, okay, so the easiest is go to www.atika.nz yep. um, and you know, uh, all the Attica stuff's there and um, other than that, I mean, I'm on Facebook. So, um, yeah, just jump on there and <laughs> you know, you want to ask, ask us any questions, you know, email through the website, it's all cool. Mm, awesome, sweet. Make sure you go check out their website, which is www.atika.nz and um, also if you do like these episodes and you want to support our work at This Quality, you can either go to thisquality.com slash donate and also I've got to mention if you want to um, sign up to a Tigers membership form, they do have a membership where you can sign up and, and donate and help them out um, to try and get their policies and their stuff kind of going um, and, and try and change New Zealand for the good. Um, you can go ahead and do that on their website. So thanks everyone for watching and make sure you do all uh, check out um, you know, just the Tika's website, our website and have a good rest of your uh, uh, YouTube viewing experience. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> That's done. <laughs>